A nationwide monitoring system for Japan's nuclear power plants malfunctioned last month, sparking widespread concern. The operator says the system stopped operating due to poor maintenance. The emergency response and support system failed to transmit data to terminal screens at the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency for more than 24 hours from December 30th. The agency also failed to notice the problem for more than one hour. The system monitors pressure, temperature and other real-time conditions of reactors at nuclear power plants around the country, as well as radiation levels in surrounding areas. An investigation by the government-affiliated corporation that manages the system revealed that the data processing functions malfunctioned because of poor maintenance. The corporation says it will increase its maintenance of the system by rebooting its server software twice a year and introducing an automated alarm system. Firefighters in Tokyo will soon be better prepared to deal with nuclear emergencies. The city's fire department is introducing a new response unit. The crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant prompted the move. The department currently has four special units for disaster response and rescue. One of them is trained to handle radioactive and chemical substances. Those firefighters went to Fukushima last March to measure radiation and help cool the facility's damaged reactors. The unit deployment left Tokyo unprepared for a possible emergency. The department says forming a second unit will address that gap. About 60 new workers will be hired. The department formed its first radiation squad in 1996, a year after the Great Hanshin earthquake devastated the city of Kobe. If this new plan is approved, it would be the first time since then that extra personnel have been added. The Japanese government has tripled the size of emergency zones around nuclear plants. The zones now extend to 30 kilometers. More than 130 Japanese municipalities are now required to expand their preparations for nuclear accidents. The Nuclear Safety Commission decided to expand the zones in November. The government had issued evacuation orders to those in a 30-kilometer zone around the damaged Fukushima Daiichi plant. So government leaders revised their safety zones to match that. The expansion includes not not only communities hosting nuclear power plants, but also surrounding municipalities. These local governments must now boost disaster preparedness by setting evacuation routes and securing shelters. The government also almost tripled the funding for nuclear disaster preparedness to more than $100 million in a budget plan for the next fiscal year. Municipalities within the expanded emergency zone will need further financial help. The Fukushima crisis is causing Japan to rethink its energy strategy. Japan is now scheduled to launch a new energy policy by summer. The plan is to feature less nuclear power and liberalized utility fees. The government is conducting a thorough review of the country's energy policy in the wake of the Fukushima nuclear crisis. Besides reducing nuclear dependency, separating power generation and distribution is also on the agenda. An economy ministry panel on energy resources will decide when and to what degree the nation's reliance on nuclear energy should be reduced. It will set targets for a combination of thermal power with hydro and other renewable energy sources based on cost. The plan will also separate power distribution from generation. The revised policy is expected to open the path for newcomers to the nation's power industry and to liberalize utility fees for households. The Japanese government is seeking to pass a law that will set a 40-year limit for nuclear reactors. If enacted, it would be the first legislation regulating the lifespan of nuclear reactors. The call for a review of the safety regulations on Friday was made by Nuclear Crisis Minister Go Shihosono. It follows Japan's worst-ever nuclear power plant accident in March. The government wants to make radical changes to its safety regulations. Nuclear power will only be used when it's confirmed to be safe. Under the plan, the working life of nuclear reactors would be limited to 40 years in principle. Extensions would be subject to government checks on the obsolescence of the facility, and the plant's operators could pass capacity to provide appropriate maintenance. Of the 54 nuclear reactors in Japan, three have been in operation for more than 40 years, including the number one reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi. 
Over the next five years, nine more will reach the 40-year mark. We'll never let it happen again. It's highly significant that a 40-year limit has been decided on and stipulated in legislation. The government plans to submit a bill by the end of this month. Well, the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has to juggle two huge tasks this year. One of them to continue cooling the damaged reactors and the other is to start preparing for decommissioning. The Japanese government said two weeks ago that the reactors had reached a state of cold shutdown and that is an important step in bringing the plant under control. The government and Tokyo Electric released a work schedule showing that decommissioning may take up to 40 years. Tokyo Electric plans to develop technology for decontaminating the inside of the reactor buildings and repairing the containment vessels. It also needs to remove fuel that's believed to have melted and fallen into the containment vessels. Now, another task is removing debris from the number four reactor building, which was damaged by an explosion. Tokyo Electric needs to get the debris out of the way so it can start removing the spent nuclear fuel. The challenges for Tokyo Electric also include keeping the reactors cool and dealing with contaminated cooling water. The company plans to have the length of four kilometers of piping. It also plans to install a new facility to remove radioactive strontium from wastewater. Japan's new nuclear safety agency is launched in April. It will be given the job of overhauling the country's nuclear regulations, but it must first come up with a set of rules on crisis management. The new agency will be expected to provide supervision and advice to power companies in the event of an emergency. It will take over from the industry ministry's nuclear and industrial safety agency and will come under the environment ministry. It will be responsible for advising the cabinet office's nuclear safety Commission. The agency will have a budget of nearly $650 million. That's up nearly $180 million from this year, a sign that the agency will be expected to strengthen crisis management, upgrade its regulations and take on more duties. The government has come under criticism for being slow in collecting and releasing data after the nuclear accident in March and for not ordering the operator of the disabled Fukushima plant to prepare for a huge tsunami. The government says the new body must secure experienced professional personnel and cultivate a sharper sense of crisis among officials in addressing safety. A senior cabinet ministry official says the agency must protect the people and the environment. Japan's leading electronics maker has developed technology that could make contaminated soil safe. Engineers at Toshiba produced a mobile system to clean up the grounds of schoolyards, parks and public spaces. Workers are loading up their trucks to begin the job in areas around the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. Government rules for the cleanup take effect later this month. Then communities will begin full-scale decontamination work. Toshiba spokespersons say their equipment can decontaminate 1.7 tons of soil and sludge per day and it can remove up to 97% of the radioactive substances. Toshiba and Japanese machinery maker IHI also collaborated in developing a system to extract low-level radioactive materials from water in reservoirs and sewage systems. The devices are based on technologies used to decontaminate the Fukushima Daiichi plant. We'd like to decontaminate the soil and water with this system. We'll go ahead with the work after checking that the communities are safe. Then we hope residents will come back. Company spokespersons say they're trying to reduce the equipment's operating cost and improve its treatment capacity. They hope to ramp up production while assessing demand for the product. 